my computer. Go. Okay. Well, Guillomar is uh, someone coming every month to 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 Maski for a long time ago, for three years, we were thinking now. And um, she is a psychologist, uh, she is astrologist, she's a writer, and uh, well, she has an amazing uh, project called, how do you, how do you say it in English? Living in alignment. Living in alignment. Mm -hmm. And um, well, we had this, uh, this uh, conference for last week here in Maski, and we decided to, to do it online uh, and today we're going to do it in English. And it's amazing because I think the, I mean, the title is just perfect for today. And, and she's going to give us an amazing explanation of the situation astrologically. And also some, I think, I don't know if saying tools, but it's a good way to understand these changes and how to take them and how to, well, to be more calm, <laughs> understanding a little bit better what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. leave you with her. I yeah, well, first of all, Sonia, uh, you forgot to explain your project, your musky project, because you decided thanks to this, this lockdown, you, you're sort of like um, expanding in, in, in a new concept. So could you please sure. tell us a bit about it? Thank you, Guillermo. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, well, we we planned for this year starting with some with an application with an app, having some meditations. And I think, Mary, like I told you when you came, um, but then these arrive, and it seems that we're going to do a bigger online project because, well, it's true that what we want to do is to share knowledge and to, well, to somehow help you to to have a, a healthier lifestyle but um doing it only when you come is more difficult and it's very easy to do this kind of thing so the idea is that we're going to start preparing talks and videos and meditations and recipes and everything uh through our blog we we just did the first uh post in english this week and we've done two in Spanish so yeah I hope you like it you enjoy it and maybe you can go to the newsletter to to register yourself so you you will receive every week you will receive some information yeah thank and, you <laughs> yeah and I'll share I'll share the link to my contacts so you guys can subscribe uh, to the newsletter and receive the blogs it's quite, quite interesting because there's a lot of like uh, healthy tips you know for a healthier lifestyle basically so good great project and love to be part of it <laughs> so thanks everybody for joining up and thank you to all those who will be listening to this um in the future or later on or um because i'm going to record the audio and i will put the audio up not the video i'll put the audio up and in youtube so like if anybody has any questions while I'm giving the chat, you can ask via uh, the chat. So while I'm talking, you can ask via the chat. And at the end, I'll unmute everybody. So if anybody has questions, they, we can like have a conversation afterwards, okay? Okay, so um, this is, uh, so as Sonia was saying, we are in the midst of a very interesting time. As you all know, we're, most of us or all of us are already in lockdown. Um, so it's like, oh my God, everything's come to a halt. Um, everybody's quiet, pollution is clearing up, birds are starting to chirp louder. And you know, it's like everything is changing, but what's going on, right? So people are, are fearful because they can't see the future. They don't know what's gonna happen. And actually that's a good thing. And what I wanna do with this chat is explain to you why that's a good thing that you're not being able to see the future. And uh, what is this about jumping timelines? Uh, which is what I'm going to explain. You know, what, what is a timeline? What is time? Uh, how do we jump timelines? What is that? How does that affect us? And how can we uh, make those jumps in timelines quicker and with more flow? 
if we understand the basic dynamic, we'll be able to flow with change instead of resist change, which is what it's all about. Astrologically, we are in a very interesting year. Like astrologers have been saying this for a long time now. This is the year in which we, humanity, change into, because next year the, um, begins the era of Aquarius. It's a totally new era. Has the, up to now, we've been living in the era of uh, Pisces. From my perspective, it's the era of patriarchy. So the astrological era is 2,000 years. Patriarchy has been 5,000 plus years. And this is the year where we leave patriarchy behind fully. And next year is the year where we start a new era. And that new era is totally different practically opposite to what we have been um, experimenting and living up until now. So we have no references. And of course, not having references makes us feel very scary, very scared sometimes. But as I, as I said, and as I will explain further and deeper, um, it's good not to have references. So we think that time is linear. We think that time, like we are, okay, in the present moment and anybody who's a little bit into spirituality will say, yeah, yeah, being in the present is the cool thing. And you might even know that mantra that says only the present moment exists, but it's like, um, what does that actually mean, right? So the way we've conceived time up until now, uh, well, not up until now, actually, um, just in the last few hundred years, is a time based, it's a time, a concept of time that comes from the uh, Industrial Revolution. Uh, it's based on having, you know, watches in your hand and following the minutes and uh, keeping a schedule and everybody has to be uh, at work at the same time. So this wasn't like that before, but uh, this is the way we've conceived time in the last 200 plus years. And in, in a sense, we've become uh, slaves of time and at the same time we've tried to control time which is kind of absurd if you think about it um, and it's just a concept it's like money money is just a concept it's not a real thing so um, I've done, done this little chart here hope you can see it okay so the way we conceive time like right now is this there's a past present and future and we believe that we go from the past, that we were born before, that we're you know, gonna die in the future or whatever. So, and things happen in the past and they have uh, had this effect on me and because of this, this is the future I try to avoid basically. So with this concept of time, past, present and future, uh, we don't live in the future because we're all, all the time with our mind set in the past or with our mind set in the future. And like uh, this, we, when we don't live the, the present and we're, we think we are uh, preventing things happening in the future by trying to not have the same experiences as the past, we're actually repeating the past. We're, not, we're actually creating the future based on our past. So what we're doing when we do that is we are Basically, it's like we have uh, mental patterns. Say, for example, uh, your family um, lost everything in the war. So uh, what's going to happen is you inherit a mental pattern that says, be careful, you can lose everything in a certain day. So you have to accumulate or you have to save money in the bank or you have to have a lot of things and you have to have a lot of toilet paper in the cupboard just in case. So. When, if you live like that, what you're going to do is you're going to always try to avoid having that experience in the future. And either you can overcompensate or you can actually have the experiences that you don't want to have. So in essence, what's happening is that you're not living your life because you're trying to avoid a uh, past in the future. And that future isn't even real. But the more you try to avoid a past in the future, the more you're going to create a future. Because wherever we set our mind, that's what we're going to create. So basically what we've been living is, I need a little, we've been living, we've been repeating like patterns. So imagine each little box, it's like a pattern. And so we have, we see 
we're just repeating the same pattern over and over again. And uh, that doesn't work. Anyway, so, and we're projecting it onto the future and repeating it there. So say for example, um, I was, when I was a kid, I didn't know how to get along with other kids. So I got bullied and I got left alone. So for example, if, if I try to be in the present moment and looking at the past, which is not being in the present moment, but if I try to analyze my past, um, what, I, what would happen is that I would find, I would see how many, in how many ways this pattern, for example, of me being alone has been repeated in my life. So it's like, oh yeah, I was left alone as a little child in the cot because uh, when I was crying, my mom didn't come and pick me up. And then uh, my dad uh, lost me in the park. And then when I was in school, um, the kids left me alone and didn't want to play with me. And then, so the more you analyze your past, the more you're going to see that the same patterns are happening. It's just this one, it's basically like one pattern that you're repeating and repeating and repeating. And all you've done, if you look at your future, is try to avoid that. So you can either be in the future, like project yourself in the future as a loner. And uh, I'm just avoiding all social contacts because this way it's easier and I don't have to face the pain of being alone. Or all the contrary, I'm going to be super social and develop all sorts of uh, skills and abilities to be able to um, relate with people or even better than that I'm going to teach people to relate to each other but I'm repeating the same pattern I'm in the same timeline I haven't done any variation okay so basically what life wants for us is to have the experience and to have this the experience doesn't mean that something horrible has to happen to you it's just that you have to feel it in your body. So what we do when we try to avoid repeating what happened in the past is that we're actually not having the experience. So if I try to avoid feel my loneliness, I'm not having the experience or the feeling of feeling lonely. And this is all that life wants you to do, to have, to have the feeling and to go, oh, now I know what it's like to feel lonely. I'm going to let it go. Because don't mistake, when, when you think you feel lonely, you're not letting yourself feel lonely. Because if you start going like, oh, it's horrible to feel lonely, I want to feel lonely, you're not actually experimenting the feeling inside you. You're having, you're avoiding it with, a, with stories in your mind, trying not to feel what's going on in your body. Does this make sense? Okay. So the, the key here is to actually start feeling what's going on in your body to then be able to release it. For example, um, right now with, all, with this lockdown, um, especially for those who um, like us who have been, or Elena who's saying she's been like maybe one and a half or two weeks, um, if you've been a while in lockdown, you'll find that all these emotions are going through you. And sometimes you have a really great day and other times you just go really low and you start feeling fear. Uh, you might go through denial. You might go, I don't know, all sorts of or depression or feeling uh, anger. You can go through all sorts of emotions these days. Well, the, the key to, to these days is actually just to feel the emotions without feeding the story that goes into our mind. Because if there's one fundamental key this year, and then, uh, sorry, I forgot, I'm going to, afterwards, I'm just gonna make like a quick uh, resume of each astrological sign so you guys know where the change is going for each one of you. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So the key, the fundamental key this year, we have to learn to not be in our mind, and we have to learn to feel in our body the emotions and release them, okay? And when you are like worried, sick, when your head is spinning around, when you are in anguish, when you are really angry, you're not in your body, you're in your mind, okay? Being in your mind is what people call ego, but it's immature ego. Mature ego is a nice thing because the mature ego can, is the mind that stays in the body. But the immature ego is the mind that 
runs away from the body because it can't stay, it doesn't know how to feel things because it hasn't had, it hasn't learned to su sustain emotions because basically we've all haven't been taught how to feel emotions and how to hold emotions in our body. But now we have a great chance to do so thanks to this lockdown. Okay, so as I was saying, um, oh, I'll give an example. Imagine you go to a movie. So you go to a movie and you see some tragical event in the movie and you're in a safe space because this is not happening to you, but it's there in the movie. And that's gonna trigger feelings inside you. And because of the fact that you're in a safe space, you're gonna let yourself feel. So that's why, that's why we cry in movies because we're actually being impacted by the story. But the thing is that that story that impacts you, it doesn't impact you by chance. It doesn't impact you because it has nothing to do with you. On the contrary, every story that impacts your body and makes you cry or have an emotion is because it does have to do with you. Because you do have that information in your body. And to have that information in your body it doesn't mean that necessarily the same tragedy as you see in the movie happened to you. It means that somewhere along the lines of your ancestors, somebody had that experience or had that, lived that situation and actually just had to keep on surviving and moving forward. And because of that, couldn't actually feel the pain. So that pain was locked up in that person's body. And then it was just transmitted from generation to generation until somebody is quiet enough, comfortable enough, alone enough, and still enough, for example, now, to feel it. So what we're doing with this lockdown is feeling those old emotions that didn't even start with us. By the way, there's a book called It Didn't Start With You from Mark Wolin, W-O-L-L-Y-N, uh, that I really recommend on cellular memories and how we um, are experiencing um, things from the past. And right now, this is what's coming up and leaving, just emotions that belong to the past, to the world's past, not to your own individual past, okay? And we're, this is part of what's going on right now with this lockdown and with all these emotions that we're feeling right now. So, um, like I was saying, okay, so little patterns, we're experimenting the past, or so we, we're, we've had experiences in the past, and um, like the truth is this, I, I realized this because um, I, I've started doing my personal development and analyzing myself since the age of eight um, because of my sensitivity without psychologists or anything on my own. And because of that, I got kind of obsessive, um, just you know, going over patterns, going over patterns, going over patterns, up to such a point that I realized that I basically remembered absolutely everything since the age of one and a half. You know, it's like crazy. And when the more I went into that, the more I just got deeper into the same pattern. And then one day, um, I, I went, I had this regression therapy done and the therapist whom I didn't know did, she didn't know me at all previously. Um, and she gave me like an image of, uh, supposedly a past life pattern. Uh, I didn't, it didn't resonate to me as a past life pattern, but definitely everything she said was exactly the same patterns that I was already repeating, not only in my own life and trying to avoid, but also when I finished going through all the patterns in this life, what started popping up in me are patterns from past lives and from my ancestors. But as I said, when this woman did this regression therapy with me, she gave me a pattern which was the same pattern as all of them. So then I, got, I went like, oh my God, then what, what's been going on all this time? I've just been going over and over and over and over the same story, thinking it was my life, my ancestors' lives, my past lives, when I was young, when I was less young, was, it was just the same story over and over again. And right now, at this moment in time we are at, that's what we've been doing collectively, going over the same story over and over again. Like if you think about it, if you think of your own tragedies, 
like how many millions of people on this planet have the same tragedy or have had the same tragedy that you have we're not alone in this we're actually not very original in 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 our tragedies and in our sorrows we we actually have a lot in common to millions and millions of people each one of us so anyway so when i realized this then i i figured that right there is no such thing as a as a linear time this is just a social construct as i was saying and um what happens is when you realize that you're just repeating one pattern and the way to realize that you're just repeating one pattern is when a situation makes you angry so if you feel angry about any situation that's a very good telltale sign that you are stuck in an old pattern so all that you have to do in that situation is own your anger, which doesn't mean spill it out and insult and tell somebody to do something, but just feel the energy like down, down. And that it's a very, anger is a very, very grounding and centering energy. If we don't use it, if, if we know how to hold it in our body. And if we use that anger and we use it to define what it is that I don't want to live anymore, we can automatically jump to the next timeline just by intention so that's one way of jumping timeline i'll explain a bit more what it is what what it means to jump a timeline okay a little just in a little while so that's one way that would be the way of like i, I don't want to do this this I, this is e for energy and an upward arrow which means that we can jump a timeline from uh increasing incrementing energy or we can jump a timeline by energy that decreases. So by default, we normally jump timelines by energy that decreases, which I'll explain in a little while. And anger, with, if, you, if you jump a timeline with anger, if you change pat, from one pattern to another pattern with anger, then uh, it's quicker, it's not so messy. Um, you might get the ego's trials, where you will get ego's trials to see if you really jump a timeline or not. Whereas if you jump a timeline in decrease of energy, it's quite definite. Um, anyway, so I'll give an example of jumping a timeline with, um, with anger. For example, uh, remember um, Olivia de Havilland in uh, Gone with the Wind? When she swears she will never be hungry again, okay, she's like, I swear I will never be hungry again. So when you speak like that, you're, you're using your lower chakras, uh, your root chakra, like all the energy is, <clears throat> is down there. And that's the way to ground yourself to say, I don't want this anymore. For example, if you've been, I don't know, if at work you're the kind of person that is always subservient, saying yes to anybody, and then suddenly one day you said, okay, this is it. I'm tired of this. I'm sick and tired of being pushed around and not being considered, for example. So if you do that, then you just go with your intention and that anger well-grounded. You go, from now on, I want to be considered. I'm not going to say yes to every, everything that everybody asks, right? So that's one way of jumping timeline, which has a repercussion, which is the trials of ego in the form of the old pattern that you're trying, that you've just intended to let go is going to appear immediately, like that same day at the most the next day, in such a way that you will have the temptation to go back to the old pattern. So for example, uh, your boss suddenly comes really angry at you and starts saying, you do this, do that. And that would just freak you out and it would immediately get you into that subservient mo mode. So that's when you have to, get back into you and go, no, that's the old pattern. And then if you really realize this and you just turn around to your boss, just very mindful of releasing an old pattern, you go, no, I'm not doing it that way or anything like that. But it will come from such a grounded place that it would be very easy to shift the external situation. Okay, does this make sense? Alrighty. So, and then the other way of jumping timelines is with the energy going down. So the um, jumping a timeline with an energy going down has to do with releasing the past. 
uh, or well, the other one does too, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like it's going into the past. So when we go into the past, like people who are always looking in the past uh, are people that are more melancholic and more down, whereas people who are more like future orientated are more hyper. So if you're more the hyper type future orientated, it's easier to jump a timeline with anger. And if you're more like um, stuck in the past, it's easier to jump a timeline and more melancholic through um, the other side, going down to the past. So what happens on the other side? Uh, what happens is that you, for example, you get, when, when you repeat a pattern a lot, the pattern gets denser and denser and denser and denser. And uh, if it gets very dense, the energy gets very stuck. And if the energy gets very stuck, astrologically, uh, the planet Uranus, has to do with what with trauma and what happens when the energy gets very stuck there's a sudden a sudden event that is like a, a lightning bolt because uh uranus is related to it's the the energy of uranus is like a lightning bolt that just goes and blasts that stuck pattern and releases the energy in the stuck pattern right so for example um say you're somebody who's just obsessed with um keeping safe you know we gotta keep safe i gotta keep safe i gotta keep safe i gotta keep safe so then what's gonna happen is that life gives you like thousands of opportunities to let go of the patterns and change but imagine that you don't so as life goes by it's going to like the energy is going to appear in different levels you know first it's like only like etherical or spiritual level and then it's psychological so when things start going dense in the psychological area then we have like anxiety or stress or we get uh depressed or we have emotional issues and then if we don't change then what happens is the energy goes denser and denser and denser and we have start having relationship problems and if we don't change then the energy keeps on going denser and denser and denser and we might get accidents, uh, stuff stolen, laid off a job, stuff like this. And we get denser and denser and denser and we still don't change. And then what happens is um, we start getting ailments and diseases and chronic diseases and cancer. And cancer is like one of the densest things that you can get together with um, big losses. Um, but it's a sign of being stuck in a pattern years without doing the jump in timeline so if we understand this we can actually avoid denser manifestations of energy just by being aware of how time changes i i'm literally saying and it, i i believe this because it's been my experience many many times um, that if you actually let yourself change you do not have dense experiences like i've for example, I was, um, I received like, um, like a fine. I let's, let's to, to make it simple. I, I was going to get, a, I was going to get fined for something. So what happened was I realized what the pattern was that I was stuck in. So I let it go. And as I let it go, the fine was removed and I didn't have to do anything. And this, this has happened to me several times already. Like with that exact example. Um, and I've lived it in so many other ways too. So you can, the best way to avoid a situation that you fear is actually feeling the fear, letting go and doing the change. But if you try to avoid a situation that you fear by doing something externally, all you're going to do is increase the probabilities that that thing will occur. So you cannot change life from the outside. You can only change life from the inside. You can change the story from the outside, but the story is, the, is what your mind is making up. The story is just the things that your mind, um, is it the way your mind interprets reality? That's the story, but that's ego. And that's ego doesn't create individually, ego creates collectively. So anyway, but that's a different story, but 
that you're not you can't decide what you want in life if you are in your mind creating your story you have to bring everything through your body and feel the old feelings feel the old emotions those emotions that you don't want anymore and those patterns and mental patterns that you don't want anymore because you've just repeated it so often it's just like ugh, this is boring it's bringing energy it's taking energy away from me this brings me to another another point or another two points which is um energy vampires and uh another thing is the this i had this uh one of the universal laws according to me is that in comes the light out comes the crap so this means that every time that light is actually energy with new information comes in energy with old information has to come out and this applies to every single thing in life so for example if you want to put a new sofa into your living room you have to take the old sofa out if um or when you lose money and you actually accept it you actually something new comes into your life or every time you have a loss you have a gain and every time you acquire knowledge or you have an epiphany you're going to have a really crappy day like right afterwards for example if you go to a retreat and you have a wonderful time and you really change your mind your mindset and you acquire new habits and it's like oh yeah this is great my life is new i'm gonna start doing new things what's gonna happen and this is what i called before like ego's trials is the old information in you the old patterns in you have to go out to make room for the more new ones and for your body to resonate to elevate its vibration to match what your mind has realized and the way this happens is that you start feeling bad emotions or you start encountering situations that are like why this again i mean i thought for example imagine um it's the first of December and you decide to go on a diet and what's going to happen? Like your best friend says, it's my birthday next week and we're going to have a really great party with tons of food and you can't say no. So this is an example of like, and you're like, Oh no, anguish again. I'm going to eat. I'm going to you know, eat too much. I'm going to binge. I'm going to get fat or whatever. Um, this is just the old patterns coming up and they can come up. As I said, like an external thing, that um tries you or it can come up like an internal thing like a feeling of something that doesn't make you feel good so normally since we don't know this we give in to this so we start doubting ourselves and we go back to the same patterns but it's understandable because the inertia of the old is very high okay so um I just want you guys to remember very this very well. So remember, it applies to everything. In comes the light, out comes the crap, and when the crap comes out, in comes the light. It's like it's it's like if we were imagine we're just like a function or like a tube where a tube where the light goes in, gets metabolized, digested, experiment experienced, and then the residue comes out. And that's how life works. So we have to understand this and not feel bad uh, when, for example, these days you might find yourself going up and down, up and down all the time because we're receiving like really high vibe um, vibrations, high, high resonating vibrations of all of the new that is coming. And that high vibration is dislodging all the old, old information in our bodies. So we're going to have one really good day where we really feel like, wow, this is incredible. What's going on in the world? I can't believe it. Like we're all united in this and uh, we're all changing and we're all, you know, um, having leaps in consciousness. And then the next day you're down in the dumps and you're anguished or you're scared or you're sad, you know, just a very bad feeling. But if we understand that this very bad feeling is actually a good thing because it's actually the old coming out. If you don't feel it, it won't come out, okay? So it's very important that you guys remember this. Um, and then uh, I also want to say that about energy vampires, like has anybody experienced energy vampires? You know what it is, an energy vampire? So, so it's, you know how um, 
it's the when you encounter somebody that uh, like really sucks your energy and you feel like oh drained you know what i mean have you had that experience yeah yeah okay so that's what people call an energy vampire but actually that's not fair it's not that person's fault that he or she is robbing your energy it's your fault that you are still giving your attention and hence your energy to somebody that represents an old pattern to you so imagine um i don't know you uh normally what happens is we look for people that resonate uh like our moms okay so um we tend to have we tend to gravitate to, towards people that resonate like our moms and then our moms have a story of grief behind her so some mom's story of grief can be very obvious some are not that obvious but whichever way um we tend to gravitate towards that kind of pe person for example in my case um as in my cousins who's around there <laughs> um our moms went through the world war ii and they went through some heavy stuff and so did our grandmother and um so i was I personally was attracted to people who had the same type of um, heavy story cellular memories in their bodies as my grandmother who had suffered post-traumatic stress. So whenever somebody resonated, their energy resonated with terror, I, for some strange reason, I found those people attractive, whether they be partners or just friends. I just tend, like had this attraction to that kind of person. But then as time went by, what happened was that I started feeling like they were stealing my energy. They were robbing my energy. They were, they were like taking all my, you know, just all my attention and my energy away. And I feel like, oh, this, these people aren't good. Why, why are they doing this? These are energy vampires. And they're not energy vampires. They're just human beings that are resonating with my stories. But I'm not realizing that for me, the way they are resonating is old because it's the same old story repeated over and over again. So I'm going to feel that my energy is robbed in any person or situation. This also applies to, for example, if you're in a job, imagine you're in a job and you go to work and you just feel tired every time you go to work. And then weekend comes and you feel great, but then you go back to work and it's like, oh my God, I just, I feel awful. I feel like my energy is being drained. This is because the situation you're living in that job or with that person or those people is old. It's just representing an old pattern for you. Okay. So what you have to do in this case is just acknowledge that that's old, accept it, feel it, feel what it's making you feel and just intend to let it go and start looking the other direction because we are, we're like, we, we carry blindfolds. We have, we're like focused always on one type of human beings, you know, and we're like demanding that type of human being to behave in a way that that human being doesn't behave that way. And we always stuck with the same pattern with the same people, same type of people. And all we have to do is take the blindfolds out and choose something different. And like the world is filled with human beings that are wonderful and that you, you can play with and you can have fun with and you can create things and you can do projects with. So if we let go of all the, those old patterns, we can actually open up and connect with new people. And this is what this year is about. And this is what the area of Aquarius is about, you know, letting go of the old, because astrologically we have uh, four planets now, like the four big tough guys, the hardest ones, they're all in Capricorn, which has to do with social structures and mental structures. And also our concept of hierarchy and authority. And these four planets are just, you know, like imagine you have an old house and they're just like banging away all the walls and they're bringing everything down and that's going to go for the whole year, you know? So it's like, I, I, you know, these, what's a demolition ball. It's like Saturn is now going into Aquarius to get some air and then going back into Capricorn and just, you know, just bang those walls and bring it all down with fresh air. So that's where, we're in the middle of this. So if we understand, as I said, the dynamics of change, it's like way easier to navigate this, guys. So, um, so we know to change time. Okay, so now back to this graph here. Um, so when we 
change a timeline uh, because everything, the pattern is getting very old and our energy is going down and we're feeling drained, we're feeling tired, we're feeling exhausted. Normally what we've done until now is that we don't allow ourselves to feel exhausted, to feel drained, to relax, to quiet down, to, you know, take a week off of work. You know, that's not conceivable in this day and age until now, of course. Um, so because of that, people go and, you know, they take Red Bulls, they take coffees, they take stimulants, they even go on drugs to just keep on going and moving. And they are, sorry, by doing that, they are resisting, letting themselves go in that um, exhaustion. So what we have to do after just saying, okay, I don't want this pattern anymore, is basically let yourself rest, let yourself go. And go, don't resist, this says resistance, don't resist that moment of just feeling absolute exhaustion, absolute tiredness. So remember this, every time you feel that, it's a tiredness that like invades you, I'm sure you guys have felt it. Have anybody felt this sometimes at any point? Yeah, no? So it's just like you suddenly feel destroyed. You suddenly feel like, ah, oh, I can't cope with anything. You know, I can't move it. So when that happens, it's because you're in the middle of a change in timeline. And if you're aware of it, this process can last anywhere from 10, 15 minutes to half an hour. It doesn't even have to last an hour, okay? If you have been resisting for a while, you might need uh, to catch a flu and just get totally, you know, feel knackered with that few flu, or you might need some um, slight illness to be able to really indulge in that sense of, I can't budge, I can't move, I can't cope with this, right? So if we understand it, what we have to do is get off of social networking, uh, stop, rest, don't take stimulants, no coffee, no cigarettes, no tea. So just sit and let yourself just fall down, right? And as you do so, uh, if possible, with no one else around, if possible, if not possible, close yourself in the toilet. I don't know, do something to find your quiet space or tell everybody to just let you be for a while. But as I said, you only need a few minutes. Um, in Spain, we have a siesta, and like that's a, a beautiful invention because it's the perfect way to jump a timeline without even knowing. <laughs> and you know, we ha you have that feeling of being reset. It's like resetting the computer. I'm sure you guys have in some way have done it in some moment. So um, what you do is you just let yourself go, you close your eyes, and you just sink into the tiredness. You, you can lie down, you can rest, whatever you feel like, um, or just sit in a sofa. And then you're gonna have, you're gonna go, you're going to go through a, the, the following feelings. So first is resistance, you let go of that, you don't resist, because if you do, uh, Uranus, as I was saying before, is going to uh, crash and explode the, the denseness and the situation is gonna create a traumatic event if we resist for a very long time. So in the past of human history, uh, since people did not like change and were not used to change, uh, they resisted a lot. So Uranus had to come along and create very tragic events and wars for us to actually change and jump in timelines. So nowadays, since we are used to change, thanks to internet, thanks to flying all over the world, travel and commerce and everything, change is so much part of our lives that we don't need huge traumatic events to to have that change created but we still are afraid of the void so the void is the feeling that our ancestors had when they lost everything but since it was so uh, traumatic um they passed the the the, um, the fear of the void they passed that down generation to generation so we have fear of void, and because of that, we resist more change. So another key of the flowing with change is to not fear the void. And I'm gonna explain uh, uh, this a bit more specific, specifically now. So what happens is when you, you know, avoid the traumatic event from Uranus, 
then you just keep on going down. What you're going to find are two emotions, loneliness and hopelessness. So first we're going to go through, uh, for me, at least it's always been first loneliness and then afterwards hopelessness so far. Um, so loneliness is a feeling of, you know, I'm alone. I'm alone in this. This is only happening to me. Uh, nobody's here to help me. So it's feeling really, really lonely. But when we actually go into that feeling, uh, a funny thing happens is that you realize that we are all connected in this planet by feeling alone. So there's something common that every human being has. It's loneliness. Hmm. So it's where when you fully realize that in your body, it's like, oh, wow, suddenly something changes in your mind. And so you go through loneliness. And then the next one is hopelessness. Hopelessness is, I don't know what's going to happen. It's like my future is black. Like, has anybody had a depression? Anybody here have a depression in their lives? I've had three. Okay, one there. Okay, another one there. So uh, when you have a depression, um, there's a point where you, you just, everything seems black. You just, you know, the future, just, you can't see the future. It's just like, it's a deep sense of hopelessness of there's nothing in the future for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Just a very, it's almost anguishing feeling. Okay. But you have to go through that because something very simple. If you're going to jump a timeline, you obviously, since you're not going to see the future, you can't because new timeline, new pattern. And all we know how to do is see the future through our old patterns. So because of my old patterns, I'm projecting those patterns into the future and think I'm seeing and uh, foreseeing the future and avoiding things to happen. But that's not real. That's a, a, a perception, a false perception we have based on patriarchal values. The truth is when you jump a timeline, there is no way that you, you can, because all the patterns that you had before are not applicable in the new timeline. And right now we're in the middle of this at a collective level, all of humanity. So right now, everything that we knew was true before is not going to be true anymore. We're not going to come out of this being the same as before. So we have to have this feeling that what's going to happen is like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. You shouldn't know. If you know what's going to happen, means you're not in the present moment. It means you haven't jumped the timeline. It means you're not doing the change. And that's scary. <laughs> that's not a good, that's not good. You don't want to, you really don't want to know what's going to happen. You just want to feel yourself in the right spot. I'll explain that later. So after the hopelessness, for all those who've had depression, what happens is uh, you touch rock bottom. You guys, I'm sure you've heard the expression of touching rock bottom. And once you touch rock bottom, you can only go up, right? Well, this is a, actually a real thing. It's not a figment of anybody's imagination. So what happens is when you touch bottom, you start going up, then you're open. You just, because of that hopelessness and that accepting the loneliness, you totally open yourself up to receiving the information of what is new. Because what had happened before is because of resistance, you're closed. No, 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 I wanna keep on repeating the same old patterns. No, 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 but then the energy gets stuck. So once you just give in and accept that you don't know what's gonna happen, you feel alone, you can do absolutely nothing, that's when you open, that's when the light comes in, that's when you touch bottom, and that's when phew, you go up, and what appears, what you go through is, the creative void. So rock bottom and the creative void. The creative void is what happens right before uh, a new timeline. Um, it just se despliega. A new timeline um, opens up right after the creative void. The creative void is, I don't know if you guys know a bit of uh, um, quantum physics. So quantum physics states that um, pre a precursor to reality, to manifested reality is 
like a soup of multiple possibilities. And the creative void is that soup of multiple possibilities. And once we, once we talk, touch rock bottom, it's like if we suddenly go through that soup and choose one of the timelines and one of the possibilities and the timeline opens up. And when a new timeline opens up, a new pattern is there for you to experiment as if you were living a past and a future, okay? So that new timeline, you might even, for example, you look at your past, say like you look, you jump a timeline and then you look at your past when you were a child and the way you interpret things is from a totally different pattern. So you look at the same thing, but you, you acquire a different information. You have a different experience when you relive that past and you project a different future from that past. That's what happens when you start, when you, um, I, the, the word just escapes me. When you, when you uh, bring out a new timeline, I can't remember the word. Um, so in the new timeline, we start experimenting. Where am I? Ah. So a new patterns start coming up and you start exper experimenting the new patterns, okay? So that's what we wanna do. We wanna let ourselves jump timelines and we wanna just be observant of the moments that we are angry and see where, like identify what is old for me without going into the story. It's like, I'm angry. Okay, what am I angry about? Start writing. Uh, I'm angry because it's like the hundredth time that this happens to me. Okay, I'm letting go. I want to experiment something different. This sounds silly, but this is how it works. Just do that. And if you're tired, just let yourself go. Just abandon yourself in that tiredness, in that feeling, in that exhaustion. Go through those emotions because then you come out on the other side. I remember once um, I had the, I, I, I started going out with this guy who after a month just totally disappeared from the face of the earth. And this was before WhatsApp. So it was like kind of really difficult to connect. Um, and uh, for some strange reason, I went into my third depression. Um, I, I didn't understand what was happening. Afterwards, in hindsight, I realized that it's, uh, I just lived the same feeling of abandonment that I had lived when I was a baby and that my mom had lived um, and she passed on to me. So it was a very big pattern, this abandonment issue. And uh, because of the situation, I had the opportunity to live it, but I resisted it so much. I fell into a depression and I could just not shift it in any way until uh, I went on vacation on my own. I went to Ibiza and, um, and then suddenly one day I went with my motorbike. I just went round and round the island. And one day I just stopped to see the sunset. And as I stopped to see the sunset, I just, I just, you know, I just lost it. I just started crying. I started bawling, but it was just like a release type bawling. And I just went deep into that sadness, into that loneliness, into that hopelessness. And then suddenly everything shifted. It was just like, boom. And I felt clean, clear, new, open, new ideas. You know, it's like, oh, wow, I can do this. I can do that. It's everything shifted. Okay. So this is, this is the change in timeline. That's how it happens. And that's what we're living as a collective right now. So it's really, really cool. And you can live big changes in timeline, or you can live tiny changes in timeline that are like just the day-to-day -day things, you know, and these days I've had already like two or three changes in timeline, just moments of absolutely, and for this morning I had one. It was just like, I suddenly felt totally just, I couldn't even keep my eyes open. And then afterwards it's like, boom, I'm okay. You know, so just go, let go into you, flow with the change. It's so much easier. And that way you really open yourself up to the new. So 
Uh, I want to just add uh, one more thing, and then I want to go over the each uh, of the signs of the horoscope to explain what changes what changes this year brings to them very briefly, very quickly. And after that, um, well, I'll open um, the mic. So if anybody wants to ask a question, just ask. Okay. So, um. What we're what we're what we're trying to achieve this this year as a collective is to be more soul based and less mind based. What does this mean? So mind based is the immature ego that goes around in circles and thinks it can control things by interpreting life and creating stories, but all it manages to do is create more anguish, create more anger, create more fear. And this year, you're really going to see the difference very very clearly from when you are centered in you and when you're not centered in you. And it's gonna really feel very quickly, very bad to be off your center. And it's gonna be, be very quick and fast. If you just take a decision to get back to you, it's like, boom, you're back. So you're gonna find like, it's, it's like really crazy, really from one extreme to the other, just from one moment to the other, we can really lose it. And then we can really come back to ourselves. So, Coming back to yourself is getting with your mind, instead of putting your mind on the outside and thinking and believing that things from the outside condition, how you feel and live and what will happen to you, it's changing that reference and realizing that every experience that you're gonna have in your life stems from the inside of you. And if you manage this consciously and you're aware of how your mind shifts attention from an external uh, source to an internal source. If you, if you are aware of this, you can actually create what you want in life. If not, you're just going to be totally um, absorbed by collective consciousness. But collective consciousness right now is really yucky because it's full of fear and really yucky emotions. And you really don't want to be there because it doesn't feel good. Uh, right now, what feels good is to be an individual consciousness, which is inside your body. So it's how am I feeling right now? And what I want to do is I want to feel good and feel good with me right now. So if I've just engaged in collective consciousness, say, for example, I went to work uh, and I work in a hospital and you know, hospitals can be very dense or supermarkets can be very dense these days. And so I get, I go home and I'm like, my head's all over the place or I'm worried or I'm spinning around or, you know, I, I'm in my egoic mind, I'm not in my center. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go, hey, whoa, this is the old, I'm letting go of this, I don't want this. Okay, cool, that happened. But I'm not going to keep on feeding that with my attention. I'm going to feed me with my attention. So I go back to me and I go, how do I wanna feel? I want to feel good. Okay, then do something right now to make you feel good right now. Don't expect anybody to give you something to make you feel good. So, I don't know, make yourself something nice to eat. Uh, take yourself for a walk if you can, or get yourself something comforting, uh, like a, make yourself warm, take a bath. Whatever is going to make you feel good, I don't know, breathe some air. Whatever it is for you that makes you feel good right now, that's what you have to just train yourself to do, right? So what makes me feel good right now? This, I'll do it. And that's, that's the number one priority, to feel good in you. Because the more you feel good in you, the easier and quicker it's going to be for you to connect with your essence, with your higher self. And your essence and your higher self is a feeling, it's a sensation in your body. And that feeling and that sensation in your body is something that is not, um, diff it's, it's something that you, you are familiar with actually, something that you already know. It's that feeling when you're at your best. It's that feeling when you are happy, when you are joyous, when you feel fulfilled. That feeling when you feel light and open, that feeling is your essence. And each one of us has a different feeling of essence inside okay so i invite you to connect with that to 
to just meditate on that for a little while, to, to try to define what is the feeling of your essence, because it is your priority has to be to connect with that essence because everything you create in life from now onwards has to come from your essence. It's not something that you have to understand. You don't have to think about it. If you don't know what your next move is gonna be, then you're in your mind. When you're connected with your essence, with your body, you do not doubt, you know what you're gonna do. You just know, you just feel like, this is what I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do right now because this is what I woke up this morning feeling I wanna do. Okay, so that's the spot we want to get to, to be able to align ourselves with all these changes that are happening nowadays. And then finally, um, I want to just go over, as I said, the, the 12 signs of the horoscope. Um, two seconds. Some water. Uh, um, so I will go over very briefly the 12 signs of the horoscope to give you like, um, an idea of where the change is centering for you in, in your life, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna talk about the sun sign and the rising sign. So the sun sign is what you normally know as your horoscope. It's the day you were born, that's your sun sign. Your rising sign, uh, unless you're into astrology or unless you have been, uh, you've had your chart read and you remember, you probably won't know. So don't worry about it if you don't know it, at least you know your sun sign, okay? If you know both, then you will listen to both signs if they're different. Okay, so we're just gonna start with Aries. Any Aries here, Aries sun or Aries rising? No Aries, but I'll go through. Aries this year is uh, making a big shift in their career. So that's the fundamentals, like a reinvention as far as career goes. Taurus? Any Taurus, Taurus rising? Oh, there's two over there. Okay, so for Taurus, um, the thing is, the change is happening in your house of your highest truth. So that means that this year, you really have to align with what is very, very important for you. What is the th th that thing that you value most in your life? So for Taurus, what I recommend is that you make a list of like 20 items of things that, uh, are true to you. For example, I think honesty is important for me. I think nature is important for me. I think eating healthy is important, doing yoga or whatever. So you make a list of 20 things that are very important for you that are part of your core values. And with, from that, you take like, uh, a, you reduce the list to five and from five to two. And the last two things that you have, those two things, you have to do something to bring that into the world, okay? You have to create something like job-wise or whatever, or just you know working for people or giving that, but giving those values or sharing those values with other people. Um, Gemini, Gemini, sun or rising? Well, this one's very interesting and um, considering Gemini, um, the North Node is going to go into Gemini at the end of this month. North Node indicates where we're, the direction we're all going to. So it's going to be an energy that's going to define us, the whole humanity, for two and a half years or two years, two months or so. So this is important for everybody, even if you're not a Gemini. So Gemini is going to discover that uh, your mind has been... Um, say kidnapped by patriarchy. So up to now, we haven't been using our minds individually and creatively. We have been using our minds uh, collectively. So our individual thoughts are not individual. We're actually thinking from a collective mind. Um, I'll, I'll, there's this experiment, uh, there's a BBC documentary. There's this guy, this mathematician called Mark Dusatoy. I Maybe some of you have heard about him. Um, so he does this experiment and uh, he goes to this office building where there are 200 employees with a huge jar of jelly beans. And he asks every one of those 200 employees how many to estimate how many jelly, bean, jelly beans are in the jar. 
And people are, go all over the place. They go from 500 to 500,000. I don't know. They just go all over the place. And like nobody gets even near to the amount that was in the jar. But, and this experiment, he just didn't invent it. It's an experiment that's been replicated many, many times. What happens when you add up all the estimates and divide them by the amount of people who did those estimates? The difference from the exact amount of jelly beans in the jar was four units. So the collective was actually spot on estimating the amount of jelly beans in the jar. This just is a, is a way to show you how we have been like acting like bees, basically. You know, we've been marveled by bees, but human being has been, have been working like that. We haven't been thinking individually, but collectively. So this is for Gemini's sun arising, but this is also for everybody because we really have to individuate our minds now, you know, let go of the collective ideas or thoughts. So when you think of something, the question is, are you really thinking that? Or is it just because your environment thinks that, because the society you live in thinks that, because is that true to you or is it not true to you? What are your thoughts? Huh? Anyway, next sign, cancer. Any cancers? Uh, anyone? Oh, can no, that's cancer. No cancers there? Anyway, cancer, the, has, uh, the, the issue for cancer this year has to do with codependency. So codependent relationships are the ones we've been having in patriarchy, which is basically making other people responsible for how I'm feeling. In other words, thinking other people are guilty of things. So guilt consciousness uh, begets codependency. And Codependency, emotional codependency is obviously very much linked to mental codependency. And so this year, people who are sun or cancer, cancer sun or rising are really going to have, going to struggle with codependency and really have to learn to own their feelings and hold their feelings in their body and not expect other people to be responsible for what they're feeling. Leos, any Leos? No Leos there. But anyway, Leo um, is this year has to learn uh, to do things serving others. So to prioritize um, putting their attention uh, on what others need instead of is expecting uh, uh, to be recognized. So it's all about giving from the heart to in in the being open and giving to from the heart what others need for leo to not think of themselves and virgos virgos you're virgo and uh for virgo the key here is to stop looking at the past and stop expecting things to be the same way so if you find yourself looking at the past if you find yourself getting frustrated for something it means you're stuck in the past so don't force situations just turn around so if something doesn't work out just turn around go the different go a different direction so don't force okay um next sign is libra any libras no libras <laughs> so libra is the rock and roll is happening in your fourth house of the home emotions so it's all about not avoiding conflict but actually engaging with conflict to be more real and to put yourself out there and to really not be afraid of saying what you want okay um is scorpio scorpio <laughs> two scorpio there me too so we have this year what we have to learn is to uh, scorpio tends to be a bit paranoid and like a bit on doesn't want to have the same experience again. Like if we've already been down there, I'm not going to go down there again because I already know how that person's going to react. We tend to like be like on top of everything. So the thing is, if we judge or we reject somebody to begin with, we're actually going to close the doors to the people that are going to appear to collaborate with us to create something new. So we have to stop being suspicious and paranoid of others and stop judging others so as to not close our own doors. So the way to reframe this in your mind, which makes it easy, 
is to say, okay, like you see somebody and you go, oh, I'm, I don't want to talk to her because I know what I'm going to find there. And just go like, okay, this kind of person I'm feeling that I reject and I don't want to talk to. That's interesting. I'm going to accept that maybe that's a person that, you know, might open doors for me. Maybe not that person, maybe that type of person. So just because I don't want to close my doors, I'm going to accept that person. Okay. Uh, Sagittarius, Lena, Sag. So Sagittarius is, um, uh, I have to tell you that uh, Santa Claus doesn't exist, even though you would have loved to keep on believing in Santa Claus. <laughs> so you know why it doesn't exist? Because you are Santa Claus. <laughs> so get moving. Connect with your gifts and start giving it to people. What are you doing? Just expecting Santa Claus to come and save you. Get out there. Give it. Give you what you've got to give to the world. Inspire others. Okay. Um, Capricorn. Capricorn. Uh, we are having a major identity change, and uh, we're becoming uh, world communicators. So we have to. We have to. We're opening up to communicate at a greater scale. And Aquarius, any Aquarius is there? So Aquarius is going through the major shift next year. This year is more like a cleaning up of old stuff for Aquarius. So you might as well accompany this energetic movement with an actual physical um, act of clearing up your own house. So if you're an Aquarius, uh, buy the Marikondo book or see the YouTube videos, you know, the Marie Kondo method of clearing up and putting order into things, you know, clear stuff out, um, take, give things away, take it, get, make a car sale or a boot sale and get rid of all the clutter that you have in your life because that way you declutter your mind and you leave it open for the change you're going to live next year. In Pisces, Pisces, so uh, Pisces, the kind of change there, um, uh, you, basically you have to stop uh, meowing because Pisces is like a cat meowing on top of a tree and just expecting somebody to come and rescue you. So it's not going to happen. Get down from the tree on your own <laughs> and get moving and start giving of yourself to the world. Okay? Okay, guys. So... That's uh, this part of the chat. So now I'm going to unmute you guys. If you have any questions, just ask. Yes, James. I've, I've got a question about the timeline. Sorry, you have to excuse my voice. I think I'm shifting one as we speak. Yes. Um, which is that, well, what is the fundamental difference between a timeline and an emotional state? Are they one and the same thing? Or is it just that you perceive the world a different way when you've entered a different emotional state? Yeah, so in one timeline, you have one pattern that you're repeating over and over and over yeah. again. That pattern is a mental and an emotional pattern. Okay. So it's going to define the, the base emotional patterns that you're repeating. Okay. And therefore defines your experience. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Good question. Thanks. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you, Sonia, for Thank inviting you. us to this. Thank you for coming to all of you. It's been a pleasure seeing you and hope yeah. to see you soon. <laughs>